Hello, good morning, happy Saturday, everybody. Let me do a quick audio check here. Give me one second. All right, we are good to go. We are good to go right here. Put my iPad here right next to me. Hello, good morning, happy Saturday, everybody. Today we have a very, very important one of the most important topics in embroidery, okay, especially for those of us who are running an embroidery business, okay, how to price your embroidery projects, always, always a big, big topic and always a never ending question slash topic that we're always working on. All right. Um, let me just make sure my... Uh, my second camera all right so i got the drawing board right here we're definitely going to get into numbers okay we're going to crunch some numbers we're going to come up with our very own numbers how to price for embroidery okay uh of course there are hundreds and hundreds of different equations formulas uh different techniques and ways to come about getting your pricing okay i'm going to show you how i do it how we do it here, okay? Very similar, right? Very similar to a lot of shops, but, right, everybody has their little small tweaks. And of course, everybody has different numbers that they use, okay? Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to charge my battery in a bit, but my, my laptop battery, but we'll save that for a little later. All right, uh, so today, okay, today we are going to crunch some numbers. All right, so I got my drawing board right here. All right, all right. I think we're all good to go, ready to go. All right, want to say good morning. Good morning, uh, Kingsbury Craft. All right, nice to see you here. Good morning, Jelaine. All right, from Arlington, Texas. Bevy Jean, nice to have you. Even though you're having internet uh, trouble with your internet, all right, you should be all right, hopefully. All right, uh, we got So Handmade. Good morning. And good morning from the West Coast, Sunrise Tactical Gear. All right, nice to have you. All right, from Detroit, Alicia. All right, and we have Barb, right, from North Central Minnesota. All right, all right, and we have Punky E. Good morning. All right, all right. So always, always a number one question, right, that we're always going to see every week. Okay, every week, 100% chance that you're going to see this question. Somebody's going to ask you or just ask in a group in general, how much would you price this? How much should I price this? Okay, and a lot of the, a, a lot of the questions when it comes time for pricing, a lot has to do with just your experience in embroidery. Okay, so the, le the, less, the less experience, the less jobs that you have, okay, the less you kind of know how much certain uh, products cost and how much the most important thing is how much time something can take. And even if you are an experienced embroiderer, okay, that's not just for the beginners. Even if you're an experienced embroiderer, somebody's going to come in and ask you for something that you've never done. Okay. Now you have to, okay. Now you have to kind of take a couple steps back and research and learn how to do that specific project. All right, so it's not always it's not always only for new beginners who have to come up with pricing. Okay, so every now and then you'll get like a design or a certain garment okay, that you're unsure of. And sometimes I'll, I'll be honest where sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't get it right. Okay, either you underprice or you overprice. Right. But it's never good to be on the underpriced side. Right. But. If it is your first, if it is your first time doing a certain project and you underprice and it comes out great, okay, at the end of the day, you end up winning because you learn from that experience. All right. But what happens if you get a double whammy where you lose, you underprice, and that project kind of goes down the drain with all sorts of uh problems happening, right? Those are like double whammies. But if you if you're ever in a situation where you underprice, but the job came out successful, okay? Never see it as a loss, all right? You might have lost uh, monetarily, right? You probably lost some money, but sometimes the most important thing in embroidery is experience, 
All right. So even though, even though not, uh, even though, of course, everything revolves around money. All right. Sometimes the experience is worth more than the money. All right. So never think that just because you lost on a certain project, you you lost overall. All right. Also, okay. Also, when you start going out of your comfort zone and start taking on different types of jobs, you start seeing what you like and what you don't like. Okay. You start seeing uh, there are certain jobs that I would not kind of get myself into. All right. Because I've tried it. I've done personal projects on certain items and either it's too time consuming or it's too tedious or it just isn't worth the time and the money to go into. So the only the only way you kind of know those types of uh, situations is if either you experience experiment with new projects or you experiment with uh, personal projects. All right. All right. So uh, good morning. Uh, we got Juana from Germantown, Maryland. All right. Nice to have you this morning. Good morning, Demps. All right. Allison. But then we learn from our experience. That's what it's all about. OK, that's what it's all about. Um, something about experience. What I like to do, I when when I'm pretty sure everybody else, too. Right. When you start, you want to start and you want to try out all sorts of different types of stuff. You kind of learn real quick what you like and what you don't like. OK. We like hats, polos, right? We like hats, polos. And I I dive deep into hats, polos. So anytime somebody asks me anything about a hat, I already know. I could just look at a logo and kind of know how long that's going to take or what can be puffed, what can't be puffed, all right? What what, what can we put on the side of a hat, what we can't put on a All right, so we're going to talk about uh, conditions, setting conditions, all right? And sometimes the only time you know when to set conditions is through experience. All right. Uh, we got T-Town from Ohio. All right. Nice to have you this morning. All right. And Sidar, good morning. And Lisa from Mississippi. All right. All right. So let's get this party started right here. I got a uh, quick slide right here that uh, before we get into crunching our numbers. All right. So I do have the drawing board right here, right next to me. Okay. I got my, I got my, uh, we're going to crunch numbers. All right. That's really one of my favorite things to do. I love, I love, love, love the business side of embroidery. Okay. Just business in general. Okay. I like learning about business. I watch a lot of YouTube about business. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts and read books all about business. Okay. Today's how to price for embroidery. We're going to keep it very simple. Okay. Of course we can, we can dedicate our whole week, month, all on pricing, all on investments and stuff like that. Okay, we're gonna keep it very basic. All right, I'm gonna keep it here at a uh, home embroidery level. Okay, of course, if you're kind of like at one level higher where you actually have a uh, a shop, okay, a lot of the same principles remains the same. It's just your numbers. Uh, there's more. There, there. Your numbers are a little bit bigger. OK, but a lot of the concepts, a lot of the information that we're going to talk about today, it, 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 it deals with whether you're a very small home business embroider or you're or you're an actual uh, shop. OK. I'm going to keep it very basic. OK, I'm going to revolve our training today is going to revolve around three, three important items we have to know. OK, when we're pricing, when we're pricing for our embroidery. We need to have three pieces of information that we have to have to know. All right. So let's get with. Uh, let's get my slides right here. All right. All right. Uh, so today's week 21. OK, so we're we're almost halfway into the year. Right. Believe it or not. I know the weather over here in uh, northern Illinois is starting to look real good okay i feel like it's been winter forever all right but now it's looking real nice but believe it or not we are on week 21 okay week 21 so now we're getting into kind of like the the business side of embroidery all right always fun topic always a moving target all right so the more the most important question when running an embroidery business all right this is either going to make or break okay and also like i said in previous shows where 
making a profit, that's that's what's going to determine you're either going to have good burnout, okay, good healthy burnout, or negative health problem type burnout, okay? When you're making, when your business is growing, when you're making money, okay, you, your, your business is actually moving and you're moving forward, okay? But what happens is if you don't price your, your projects correctly, all right, you're going to start burning out. You're going to start feeling like you're, you're, you're doing a lot of projects for no reason, all right? So always important to get your embroidery projects. And it's always like a sweet number, right? There's always a sweet number. You never want to underprice. You never want to overprice. You want to be right there at that magic number, okay? And for some reason, that magic number is always moving, okay? It's like we can never get it down perfectly down pat, okay? Because somebody's always undercharging and somebody's always selling more, okay? So we're always we're always trying to determine where do we land in our whole pricing, okay? All right, so today I'm gonna talk about how our, our embroidery, okay? Pricing for our embroidery revolves around three important numbers, all right? So this is some of the information that you'll hear, okay? Kind of like in different business type classes, all right? But the cost of goods sold, okay? That's just another word of, that's just, yeah, that's just another phrase of saying, your expenses, all right? Your expenses per project. So we're gonna talk about three items you have to know when pricing. So the first one is cost of goods sold. Okay, so I have examples there. It's pretty much your blanks. How much does your blanks cost? Your consumables, all right? We're gonna get into the details of all the consumables. Sometimes there's consumables that we don't think about, okay? There's consumables that we just think it's like, it's just a given, right? But at the end of the day, our consumables is stuff that we pay for, okay? So anything that, that deals with creating that project, we're going to put it down here on cost of goods sold, okay? Uh, a big ticket item that is seldom talked about, cost of operations, all right? How much does it cost to run your business? So we all have this number, right? Whether we know this number or we don't, this number exists. All right. The cost of operation is how much does it cost to run your business every month, every month, every one of us. OK, every one of us, whether you're making a profit or not, every one of us has a monthly expense. Even if you have your machines paid off, OK, no matter what, OK, especially if you're selling, OK, uh, if you're selling on a website or if you're selling, if you have a uh, an actual store, a storefront. We have a cost of operation, right? So we'll talk about the cost of operation. And our third item to consider when pricing for embroidery is our price per hour, okay? That, that is how much are we paying ourselves to complete this project? Or sometimes we might have some help. Maybe we might bring some people in to help out for a, for a, for a big project. Okay, so our price per hour, okay? How much are you paying for, how much are you paying yourself? And how much does the market allow? Because really, uh, so you'll hear this phrase uh, when it's talking about pricing, price per hour, how much do you, how much are you going to price yourself? Sometimes you'll hear the phrase, how much are you worth, right? Uh, how much are you worth is kind of harsh, okay? Because everybody is priceless, all right? It really has to be rephrased to how much does the market determine how much your service is worth? All right. So it's all about how much is the market. OK, how much does the market feel that your service is worth? OK, so a lot of this price per hour, it deals with how much experience you have. OK, so the faster you can complete a project, the higher your price should be. OK, if you're just starting out, OK, your price per hour might be a little low because it might take you a little longer to learn or to complete a project. All right. So that's how we're going to come up with today for our total sale price. All right. So as you can see, all right, there's three items we're going to talk about. Cost of goods. All right. Our, our, our expenses, our project expenses, our cost of operations, and our price per hour. All right. But in each of these three categories, we're going to break it down into more details. Okay. So we're going to talk about a lot of these details. I'm pretty sure a lot of this stuff that we talk about, okay, we've all seen it and we've all experienced it. Uh, either similar or with different type of scenarios, all right? So at any time when we're talking about any of these uh, topics, 
feel free to type in into the comments any of your experience, anything that you that you think others can benefit and and gain from your experience. All right. Uh, so we have some good mornings here. Good morning, Lejean. All right, from Western Wisconsin. All right, and uh, T Town Shirts has a question: Do you price more when they bring their own item to have done like hats? Do you have them sign a waiver? All right, very good question. All right, we'll talk about that when we talk about cost of goods sold. All right, so let me put that in the back of my brain. All right. Um, good morning, Marisa from Southern California. All right, all right. And from the Netherlands, we have Mar Marja. Okay, nice to have you here. And we have Dennis from Colorado. All right. Linda, good morning. Nice to have you. And Janet from Undia, New York. All right. All right, all right. Um, all right, so this one here, calculating your monthly expenses. Okay, this is something that I know for us, okay, I, I probably calculate every month, of course, right? Every month, every year. I mean, every year when you're doing your taxes, it's kind of like a rude awakening, right? You're like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm actually spending this much every month, okay? Sometimes we don't do our monthly expenses till at the end of the year, right? And that's definitely not the, no, the best thing to do, okay? You definitely want to do your, uh, you want to calculate your monthly expenses every month, Um uh, maybe even every week okay uh, it does it does help a lot when you're calculating your monthly expenses every week at the end of the year okay so if you do it every week by the end of the year it nothing should be kind of you shouldn't be blindsided with any other new information right but your pricing okay the reason why I'm talking about this right now is because your pricing the the amount that you price, Okay. The reason why all of us are going to have different pricing is because our monthly expenses are different. Okay. Maybe it costs me less to run my business than somebody else right next to me. Okay. So it's very important to kind of understand your monthly expenses and the best way to do it. All right. The best way that I like to do it, very simple. All right. Very old school type way is just having an Excel sheet and express an express an Excel spreadsheet and list all my expenses for the month, right? So at the end of the month, I look at the bank statement and I'm looking at, at all my expenses for that month, write it down. And a lot of it should be the same, right? It should, every, uh, a lot of the, the, the stuff that we all pay for, okay? Should always be the same from month to month, okay? With the exceptions of new stuff that we acquire or new stuff that we end up, that we finish paying for, okay? But overall, there shouldn't be any unexpected um, unexpected expenses at the end of the year if you're calculating your monthly, okay? And really profit, okay, so that last line, okay, I know it seems very basic, but sometimes we got to remind ourselves is that your profit is based off how much you sell versus how much you spend. So sometimes you'll hear people saying, hey, I, made, I sold $100,000 last year, and you're thinking, wow, that's great, right? I want to sell $100,000, but that's only half of the story, right? That's not the complete story. Or somebody that says, I sold a million dollars last year, right? That sounds great, okay? That sounds great. But you have to actually hear the ending of that story. And the ending is how much did you spend? Because you don't know how much somebody took home unless you know how much they spent, okay? So just knowing how much you've sold, okay? So just knowing how much you sold. So a lot of times, on our uh, websites or on our Etsy, it'll tell you how much you've sold for that month, okay? But you have to go on the backside and determine how much did you actually spend, right? How much did it cost you to make that money? Because sometimes you might be celebrating a good month, but in reality, your expenses over exceeds your, how much money you've sold. So we'll talk about that information too. All right. And then one last thing before we get into crunching numbers. All right. One thing that we have to know is setting your conditions. All right. Uh, really, embroidery is fun if you're doing the things that you like to do. Okay. There are certain things that us here at this shop, we stay away from. If a customer comes and asks us, 
okay to do certain to do something okay we stay away all right so that's kind of that's kind of like going back to answering um t town's question here all right um if we if we uh if we accept other people's um garments okay we don't we don't we i've had a situation where somebody came gave us some hats that were very cheaply made and when we hooped it up it started ripping out of the seams okay from that time from that from that experience we were like you know what we're not going to do this again okay because you never know the type of garments that people are bringing sometimes people are bringing in garments where they're trying to save a buck or two okay and sometimes a buck or two can make a big difference in your hats all right but i've seen some shops were very successful in accepting garments okay it all depends on uh, setting your own rules, okay? So if you don't want to accept that, okay, you could always you can always set your own rules. And the reason why I'm bringing up setting your conditions is because at the end of the day, you want to enjoy what you're doing, okay? You're not just doing this work to get paid. You're actually doing this work because you enjoy it, okay? I enjoy making hats. I enjoy digitizing, and I enjoy everything there is about hats, polos, and learning about different types of fabric, okay? But there are certain projects where if somebody comes up to us or sends us a message, hey, can you do this, okay? We already know our rules, our conditions, we already know, and we know that by knowing our strengths and knowing our limitations because everybody has limitations, right? Everybody has limitations. Uh, if there's certain equipment that you don't have, okay, you don't wanna start taking in jobs uh, based off equipment that you need, all right? And of course, terms and conditions, all right? So going back to T-Town's question, right? It, uh, do you have them save a, uh, sign a waiver? You definitely, if you are accepting people's garments, okay, customer garments, you definitely need to have a waiver, right? Part of your terms and conditions saying, hey, if we mess this up, we, 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 we're not responsible, right? We're not responsible if something goes wrong because stuff happens. Right. So you always have to protect yourself and you got to know with any type of uh, decisions that you make, always cover your back. All right. So you cover your back by having them sign a waiver. All right. So very good question here. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's go to the drawing board here. All right. And. All right. Hold on. Let me let me just go back here real quick. Uh, let me make sure. If we have any questions, bam, bam. All right, looks like we're good. All right. Uh, thank you, Lejean. Yeah, a little reminder, hit the like button and subscribe. All right, let YouTube know that we are in the house and we are learning today, this morning. All right, we got Pam from AZ, all right, from Arizona. Uh, and we have Remo from Germany. All right, thanks for joining us. Okay, all right, let's go to the drawing board. All right, how to price for embroidery. So I have I have it here listed our three, three main information that we need to have. Okay, in order for us to price, we need to have this bit of information. All right, hold on, let me. See where my battery's at, my computer. All right, we're good right now. Let me just transition to the table here. All right, so I'm right here. Here, let me get some markers. All right, how to price for embroidery, right? Three main questions that we have to have. All right, so. I already gave you a preview, right? So the first one, uh, cost of goods. Actually, let me change colors here. All right, cost of goods, all right? Cost of goods. And when we're talking about our cost of goods, we are talking about our blanks, okay? Our blanks and our supplies. Supplies slash consumables all right let me see 
Uh, yeah, looks pretty focused there. All right. Uh, all right. Let's talk about first blanks, right? So if we're in, we're if we're in the in the embroidery, right? If we're doing embroidery, you definitely need to have your vendor li uh, your resale license, okay? In order to work with the vendors, with the wholesale vendors. All right. That's just a a must. Okay. That's just a must. All right. And T-Town, I'm about to get that. I'm about to talk about that right now, okay, when we're talking about the blanks. All right, good question. Thanks for reminding me. All right. All right. So when we're talking about blanks, all right, you definitely want to have your suppliers, okay? And you don't just want to have one supplier, right? Because sometimes a supplier might be out of stock and you might have to go to plan B or plan C. Okay, so you definitely want to, and it takes it takes a while. It can take some time to create your accounts, all right? So it's not like you're you you pick up a job on Tuesday, and you're trying to create an account that same day, okay? Because it might take some it might take some time to create an account. So always anticipate what type of jobs you wanna you can wanna get into, okay? Anticipate the type of jobs you wanna get into. That way, you're already ready to go with your vendors, okay? All right, supplies, consumables. So let me list that here, okay? Sometimes we don't really think about all this information here, okay? But what I'm talking about here, okay? So, so what I'm talking about here, okay? Everything that it takes to create your item, right? So we can go all day naming supplies and consumables, right? Needles, thread, bobbin, right? The list goes on, right? Uh, you can even put in oil, right? Eventually you gotta oil your, your equipment every day. Uh, just everything you can think of, right? Cause at the end of the day, all this stuff costs money, okay? Even though uh, when we look at it per project, that it only costs maybe pennies, a dime or a quarter for each one of this stuff, right? A stabilizer, right? Stabilizer is a big one. Uh, sometimes we might think that stabilizer is pretty cheap, but it's not. When you look at it at the end of the year and you see how much money you spend on stabilizer, all right, it's not as cheap as we kind of sometimes think it is, all right? Um, cost of good, blanks, okay. Uh, so for here, we're going to make up some numbers, all right? We're going to make up some numbers so we can go ahead and calculate our numbers here, all right? So when we're talking about blanks, okay, let's say something costs $10, okay? Let's say we get something wholesale, okay? Let's say blanks wholesale, $10, okay? For consumables, I usually just say $5. Okay, five dollars for consumables. I don't really charge, you know, I don't break it down to the down penny and say, well, this hat, it cost me three cents worth of bobbin. Okay, I just throw all this stuff that I use. I just say, hey, I'm going to put five dollars. Okay, and also what this helps me by charging five dollars for the consumables. Okay, it helps me not to be so tight with with our consumables because sometimes you want to save you want to save uh stabilizers so you don't use as much okay if i'm charging five dollars for consumables all right i'm just i'm i'm throwing out needles i'm not second guessing when it's time to exchange uh needles or thread or or stuff like that okay so i charge usually anywhere between five dollars okay you could be close to that all right and then here right what t-town had mentioned all right markup markup okay i would highly suggest all right even like almost mandatory where you have to mark up your blanks okay so some people do a hundred percent markup others do 75 percent 50 percent that's all personal decision okay in our example here i'm gonna mark it up a hundred percent all right, so it's ten dollars markup. All right, reason why you can reason why you would want to mark it up one hundred percent. First of all, the vendors 
all right? They're giving you access to their wholesale prices, okay? So usually retail price can be up to 100%. You could sometimes just charge retail price, okay? Some of the, some of the pricing on the product, when you buy it, it has the retail price, okay? You should easily, you should easily be able to mark it up at the very minimum at the retail price. All right, let me just fix that focus. All right, good. All right, so here, cost of goods, blank supplies consumables, okay? If we're, we just have our own little example here, okay? Here, in this situation, we are charging 10, 25 bucks. All right, 25. These are all our totals. All right, our totals here. All right. Um, okay. So here we haven't really made money, right? Because our blanks, our blanks is going straight to a manufacturer. Our consumable is money that we paid for our products. Okay. And then the markup sometimes, okay, you're not even making money off the markup because sometimes it takes time to find product sometimes, right? It's time consuming to, to actually order or to find blanks okay somebody's going to tell you to go find something that they have that matches something that they have now you got to go on an easter egg hunt and find what you're what they're looking for okay so sometimes this markup doesn't even make up for the time that you spent ordering items okay so you can make money you uh, or you can or you could be on the other end where you kind of just made enough for that time you spent looking for the product okay so for our number for for this box here okay we have our number for 25 bucks and that's all based off an item that's a ten dollar blank all right all right let's go with let's go with pricing number two okay which is cost of operation all right how much does it cost to run your business cost of operation all right this one here i've gone to a i've gone to a lot of business uh like small business classes and uh i've seen um podcasts and videos and sometimes for some reason they forget about this here cost of operation okay whether we want to uh acknowledge it or not it's always there right those bills come every month no matter what okay so we can never forget about cost of operation now each one of us we're all gonna have a different i call this the what is your magic number what is your magic number everybody has their own magic number at the end of the month how much do you need to make at least to break even, okay? Just to pay to keep your your business running. All right. So some of these some of these costs, okay, some of these costs include can include rent, power, okay, uh internet, internet, right? And usually you have a spreadsheet, right? So we have a spreadsheet of all this information and we know how much we have to cover. And like I said before, this information can change from month to month. So it's it's always good practice to do this uh, information at least every month. Okay, you could have phone. And when you do do it every month at the end of the year when you're doing your taxes, all right, it, it saves a lot of time. All right, stuff that, we also got to consider subscriptions, all right? I know we have a bunch, a bunch of subscription. Website, running a website, okay? You got to pay for all this stuff every month, all right? Uh, your embroider machine, okay? If you're making, and some, and some people, right? I know a lot of us or a lot of everybody in the, in the, on this training today, you don't just have an embroider machine. You have other types of machines, right? You have DD. DTG and all sorts of other stuff, right? So you have multiple machines that you're paying for, all right? So all that information, we got to know how much do you have to make, right? 
Um, also, big one for uh, embroidery is your software, right? Software, because this, this type of information could be in the thousands, right? And some of us, right? The good thing about having a home embroidery business, okay, your rent could probably just be covered with your, right? Because you're already paying rent, okay? Um, you can get tax break, right? By, by with your rent also, okay? Let's say your power is already included, right? Even though you are consuming power, okay? All right, a lot of like your phone, right? You can have a lot of that stuff. All right, so I'm just kind of giving a uh, example of, let's say you already paid off your machine. All right, so some of us are gonna have some, some X's on some of these. All right, depending on it is. But at the end of the day, everybody's going to have a different, different number for this number two. All right. If if you have uh, different expenses or something that you think I missed here on number two, uh, feel free to put it down in the comments. All right. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have a lot of the similar expenses. Right. This is all information that has to get paid right every month okay now let's just say let's just give a hypothetical number and say our magic number we need to come up with a thousand bucks okay our cost of operation right uh i'm pretty sure some of us our number is way lower okay um than a thousand bucks but let's say it costs you a thousand bucks per month Okay, so when you're at this number, you have to you have to make a thousand bucks, right, in profit, just to break even, all right, just to break even. And I would say, uh, for the most part, when you're starting out, when you're starting out, this money tends to be higher, okay, because over time you end up buying your machine, right? You end up paying for your machine. You end up paying for your software. There's a lot of stuff that gets paid for, okay? Unless you start venturing off to new new uh, garment type stuff, new equipment, okay? And that situation, then your price can go up. But first, I know for, for us, when we started, our cost of operation started very high. And with time, as we paid off certain items, okay? Uh, now our cost of operation has gone down significantly from the time we started, okay? And that's just because I would say a lot has to do with us not getting into the different types of uh, garment decorating, okay? So we've stayed in, in embroidery, okay? That's like my main focus is embroidery. So I don't really have other types of uh, machines that I'm working on. Okay, and it, and it has a lot of other stuff, right? Other stuff goes down to such as supplies. All right, now what I like to do, okay? So some sometimes people like to take this cost of operation and just save it for the end of the month, okay? Save it for the end of the month, depending how much they made, how much they took home, they're gonna pay it off at the end of the month, right? But what I like to do, all right, what I like to do I like to break it into our pricing. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say you you're going to sell, you 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 forecast, and you kind of have an idea how much you're going to sell that month. Okay, let's say you're going to you're going to forecast, and you're going to say that you're going to do a hundred a hundred items. All right, just imaginary number right here. You're going to sell 100 items this month. Let's say you're going to forecast that. Okay, of course your numbers can be higher or can be lower, right? What I like to do is I like to divide 1,000 by 100 items, all right? And now that would be $10 per item. Okay, this is an extra fee, $10 per item to cover your cost of operations. All right. So here in this example, I like to bring it here as number two, just so every time we make a sale, all right, you know that your cost of operation is being taken care of. All right. And of course, you're not going to give this information to your customer, right? It's not like you're going to itemize on an invoice 
hey, I'm charging you uh, $10 for cost of operation, right? This is just information that you that you include in your invoice, right? Well, without itemizing it. You just, when you're giving a price, right, you're, you're pricing all this in the total. All right, so here I'm going to say $10. All right, so let me know if that makes sense. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Bevy Jean, you have a good question here. Could you show your spreadsheet example? Maybe what program you use and where you got it. Maybe link. I didn't pick up a toy. All right. All right. Uh, yes, we could put all this information into a... Uh, into a spreadsheet, okay? But this cost of operation, okay? Everybody's gonna have different numbers. Uh, at the best thing you can do, okay? The best thing you can do, and this is what I do, is at the end of the month, your bank statement, because highly recommend have your business and your personal account separate. So the best thing to do is just go down the list and list all the items that are in your uh, bank and uh, your bank statement. Okay, and you just plug it into an account and in, into an Excel uh, spreadsheet. All right, all right. Um, Barb says, uh, T Town, when customers want me to embroider items, I tell them I need to see the item before telling them I can embroider. They also have to sign a waiver. If it is a one item, I charge more. All right, good piece of information. All right, um, and then. Uh, Juana says, we should also need to account for last minute price increase on the garment. All right. So that's very important, right? We got to be on top of our uh, our product, especially right now, because out of nowhere, out of left field, these, uh, these prices for the blanks, okay, they're changing. They're changing uh, at least on a monthly, monthly basis. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes the, uh, the, the vendors send you an email, right, telling you uh, certain prices. But sometimes out of nowhere, your prices go up, okay? So you got to be ready for that. All right. All right. So that is, that there is our second cost, cost of operation, all right? Don't forget, we got to pay all this stuff, right, all of our uh, our monthly expenses every month, okay? So I'm including this into our uh, pricing for embroidery. Okay, and then our number three, our number three is your price, your price per hour, okay? Market value, okay? What is, what does the market value your service? Okay. If you're a beginner, right? If you're a beginner, you're just starting off. You probably aren't going to charge as much as somebody that, that is experienced and that could knock out jobs real quick. Okay. So you got to think about this. This is the one where you think. And this is the one that really changes. Okay. These, these, these numbers of um, these cost of operation, depending what, what, what your expenses are. These numbers are not going to change unless you delete some of these uh, expenses, all right? But this one, price per hour, that can always change, all right? That can always change. But, of course, you never want to undersell yourself, all right? Because this is all time that you're investing into yourself and into your business, all right? So we definitely got to really think about it when we're coming up with our price per hour. All right. And simple formula. Okay. So we're going to use a simple formula right here. That is how many dollars per hour are you going to charge? Okay. And then that number gets multiplied by the time to complete. How, how, how long does it take? How long does it take you to complete that job? Time to complete. Okay, time to complete. Divided by per garment. So for one garment. How much time does it how much time does it take to complete one garment? Okay, 
So your whole, this is where a big chunk of your profit's coming from, right? So this equation here, very, very important. Okay, this is like your, this is like your um, make or break equation right here. Okay, as long as you have these numbers, and as long as you know how much you've spent for that project, now it comes down to this final number here. Okay, this is act, this is the actual number that's going to pay for your service. All right. Let's say in our in our in our example here, okay, you want to get paid fifty dollars an hour, okay, fifty dollars per hour, and for our example garment time to complete. Let's say it takes you thirty minutes. Right to complete this item. All right, one garment. It takes you 30 minutes to complete one garment. All right. Bam, bam. 30 minutes. So that's 0.5 hours. All right. So let me just convert it to there. All right. And then, of course, get your handy calculator all right so 50 times a half that's very easy right 25. all right and then we'll we'll talk about we'll get into details of this one here all right 25 dollars all right 25. okay now something that we're going to talk about is how do you know how long how do you know how long a project takes? Okay, of course, there's two ways, right? There's two ways. There's just you do this every day and you already know how, how it takes. So experience. Okay, or if it's your first time doing this project, right? You got to calculate, right? You got to calculate how many stitches, how many stitches, and other variables. Let's see if we get to that. Yeah, other variables such as, right? We know all these other stuff that you have to do who, set up. And even sometimes we don't think about it, but uh, customer service, all right? Closing the sale. Sometimes we're going back and forth with the customer. And it takes us longer than expected to close a sale. But all that time, all that time, okay, is being used up, all right? So uh, just sometimes you got to think about that, all right? If you spend a whole day trying to close a sale, that's still part of your price per hour. It could be price per hour, right? Possible, all right? So now let's add this number up, all right, 50, 60. All right, so for our example here, okay, for our example here, we are going to charge $60, all right? And this is, I, I kind of gave a time here, 0.5, uh, assuming that we already knew how long it takes us to complete that project, right? But we'll talk about this one, about how, how to determine by how many stitches, because sometimes we don't know, right? We don't know how long something's gonna take us, but if we're doing this every day, that's why we put 0.5, but I do want to get into more details about this one, your price per hour, okay? Because there's there's a couple things I want to talk about, all right? So at the very end, okay, at the very end, um, we're going to charge 25 bucks to complete this job if it's taking us a half an hour, all right? All right, now let's get into some, let me just talk about this last one here, all right? Our price per hour. So let me change. Cameras here. Give me one sec. I'm just changing a camera real quick.
So one thing that I want to talk about is um, when we're talking about the stitches, okay? Sometimes a customer is just going to give you a logo and you don't really know how long that's going to take, right? You don't know the details. You haven't got it. You haven't got it. Um, you haven't got it digitized yet, right? So you kind of, you don't know if it's going to take you five minutes or 10 minutes, okay? But a lot of that, it all depends on your experience, okay? Sometimes I would say after a year of doing embroidery, okay, maybe two years, you could kind of see a logo and have an idea how long that's going to take to stitch out. All right. All right, hold on. Let me get this camera situated. All right, let's see if we're good. All right, we're good to go right here. Let me just switch cameras. All right, and then if you're on the if you're on the chat right here, if you're live, if you have any other information that you want to add, right? I gave it a very basic type scenario. Okay, if there's other stuff that you uh, that you consider when you're pricing, okay. But notice that I kept it very basic but we're covering all of our expenses, okay? That's the number one thing that we want to take care of, okay? All right, right. Um, let's talk about some stuff that we're talking about here. Let's go back to this one. So this is kind of like the formula that I just used. All right, so cost of goods sold, that was our number one. Number two, cost of operations, price per hour, okay? Price per hour is kind of like the stuff that I want to talk about, get into more details, because we could dive a little deeper, okay? A little deeper when it comes time for price per hour. How much are you charging for your services, right? Um, let me see. Uh, uh, Let me just see if there's any questions. All right, so Sunrise Tactical Gear. All right, so very important, okay? You have to have a separate bank account, credit card for the business, only used for business, all right? Uh, if you haven't done that yet, all right, I highly recommend you to do that because at the end of the year when you're doing your taxes, okay, it's the difference between day and night, okay? If everything is separated, all right, it saves a lot of time. All right, Bevy Jean, all right? This is what I want to get into, all right? Price per hour. How do you figure time? Do you include digitizing, hooping, machine run, cleanup, packaging? All right. Uh, this is the hard part, right? This is the part where most people kind of get, get kind of caught up with. All right. I don't know how long it takes. Right. That's usually what people say. I don't know how long this job is going to take. All right. So number one is with experience. OK. Right. Experience pretty much takes care of everything. Right. So that's kind of like the easy answer. With experience, you're going to know how long something takes. OK. That is the best way you're going to know because you could. OK. You could. You could do the math the mathematical equation where uh, i'm running my machine at this speed i have this many stitches it's going to take me 12 minutes to do okay but that's theoretically right that's theoretically if everything goes perfect with zero cuts okay there are there are certain software there are certain stuff that you can use to kind of break down how long a job's going to take you but that's all in theory OK, you can always you can always do the math. All right. It's always good to do the math if you're running 10,000 stitches and you're running your if you're completing 10,000 stitches and you're running your your embroidery machine at 800 stitches per minute. OK, it's probably going to take you 12 and a half minutes to complete. All right. But that's only half the story. OK, because then you got to think about how long is it going to take you to hoop. Right. Just like you said. Right. 
How long is it going to take you to hoop, clean up, package? All right. When you're starting, okay, when you're starting, you're either going to hit or miss. Okay. You're either going to hit it or miss it. All right. But that's what that's how I opened up today's show is sometimes, sometimes, especially when you're starting. Okay. I'm pretty sure nobody ever started embroidery and got it right 100% of the time from the beginning. Okay. You, it's going to take about two, three, four, five, maybe 10 jobs until you get it right. Okay. But the best thing to do is find a product that you're going to sell and stick with that product. Okay. Because if you're trying to sell everything under the sun, if you're, if you're opening up your doors and saying, Hey, I can do whatever you want, then you're always going to be in a learning process. Everything, every day is going to be a learning day. Okay. But if you kind of stick to a specific garment, okay. So, so for example, right, hats, we already know how long something's going to take because that's what we do, right? That's what we do every single day. We're running hats. Okay. But, but, if we're always on the learning phase, okay, eventually we got to stop and gather all that information that we learned and apply it, okay? But every time, as, as long as we're taking two steps back and annotating how much time some, something takes. So even though the equation, right, our equation, how many stitches per minute does it take to complete this project? Even though something's telling us it's going to take 12 and a half minutes, you got to take into account, okay, well, what we like to do here is we actually time ourselves. How long does it take for us to complete something? Okay, that way we have the most accurate number possible. And the more times you run that timer, the better average time you get. Because one time you might, you might finish this project. So for our example, we said that it takes 30 minutes, right? It might take us Sometimes it might take us 20 minutes. Sometimes it might take us 40 minutes. Okay. But the more numbers, the more numbers you have, the more numbers you're annotating, right? As a sample, the more accurate your average is. Okay. So to answer your question here, Bevy, how much, how do you figure time out? Okay. So two ways. Okay. Two ways is either you've done it, been there, done that. I already know how long this job can take. Or two, you have to anticipate it. You calculating your numbers and compare those numbers. Okay, compare, compare your numbers to what what your calculated number was. So the next time you do that same project, you already know. All right, you already know. All right. Um, then Allison, what if you're small enough and charge per item? Okay. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like the sample that I did right now. I, I charge per item. This was per item. Now, once you're getting into the higher quantity, okay, higher quantity. Now, your time, your setup time, a lot of that stuff is going down. So you're you're working a little quicker. So so some of your uh, completed time is is kind of is done quicker. All right. Uh, so your numbers can change, right? Your numbers are going to start changing as your quantities start going up. All right. Um, yep. And then Bar Barb nailed it right here. So uh, you will have a good idea of what an embroidered piece will cost. All right. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, okay. Experience. All right. Even though it's, it's kind of like a cop out answer, right? What is the best way to embroider is through experience. But when you do start, when you do start a, a certain project, okay. You, you have a starting point, your calculated point, and you're going to kind of venture off your calculated point. So even though we have this example, it's not like this example is set in stone and this is what you have to charge. Okay, Stuff is going to change. Maybe, maybe you're starting to work on your these items quicker. Maybe you found a piece of garment that's a little less expensive. Okay, Maybe you're saving on on supplies and consumables okay so your prices go down with time with time with more experience you could you could bring your you could bring your expenses down okay without bringing your prices down you can still keep your prices and what's going to happen is you're going to make more profit 
All right. So you can you can do multiple things. You could either bring down your price, you could keep your price the way it is and make more profit, or you can even increase your price and even double your profit. All right. So you're all learning this with time. But main thing is to create to create a form starting point a form and tracking your numbers okay so you're always tracking numbers all right um all right alina nice to have you this morning all right and then this is what i want to get into right here with what's the dar said all right some people calculate stitches by square inches all right so you could put your um when you're kind of calculating your prices Okay, you could you could put it into auto digitizing. Okay, you could tell a customer, hey, send me your uh, send me your your logo, and you could put it into any program, right? Pretty much every program has auto digitizing. Auto digitizing will give you a ballpark of how many stitches you're gonna have. Okay, it could be completely off, right? It can it can be almost accurate but it's giving you something okay but sometimes you could look at a i'm telling you it took us about five to ten projects where i could kind of eyeball a logo and see how many stitches that takes or how long right how many colors how many cuts is going to take or if cleanup is going to be a problem all right so all right but yes you you can use the square inches uh there's X amount of stitches per square inch, whether it's a tatami or a sand stitch. Okay, um, maybe I could come up with a uh, with a spreadsheet that has that. All right, so that's good information right there. I know some people use that the stitches per square inch. Okay, but after a while, I would say after like five jobs, you're not gonna use you're not gonna use that formula anymore. You're just gonna look at it and say, well, I know it's gonna be around this area right here. Okay. All right, so that's good information right there. All right. Um, so uh, let me just talk about uh, a little bit more thing about this price per hour. All right. When we're talking about our price per hour. All right. Um, th that's kind of, be uh, Bevy Jean kind of asked that question that I wanted to get into, right? Is how do you know how long something takes, all right? How long do you know, okay? If this is your first time doing it, that's why it's never a good, it's never a good idea to service, right? To to market your service with something you've never done before, okay? Because now you're putting yourself in a situation where uh, you're kind of learning on someone's project, right? It's better to, Learn, create your own personal projects and learn, right? Make your mistakes there. So when you do come up with a job, right, you already know what you're doing. But if you do, if you do work on a project for the very first time, okay, it's it's always good practice, right, to let the customer know, hey, you know what? We don't specialize in this, but I can make it happen, right? I can make it happen. That way. Okay, if something goes wrong, okay, they know, hey, this is their first time working on this, right? They'll probably cut you slack. Now, if it's something where it is a 911 project, it's a make or break project, you might not want to take that job. Okay, so I would say, okay, I would say if you're going to take on jobs, have some personal projects already under your belt. That way, that way you know what to expect you know you know what to avoid and special steps to take to prepare for that job okay but main thing that i want to get through today all right and today's topic let me remove this all right is the best thing you can do is to specialize right have your niche have your go-to garment, okay? Specialize in something so when customers are looking for you, especially if you're a home-based embroidery shop, right? An easy way to compete is if you specialize in a specific garment. If you specialize in a specific garment, then 
you already know how long stuff takes. You already know how much product costs. Okay, you know that world. You know that world. And this goes back to having fun in embroidery. Okay, because if you have fun in embroidery, I'm telling you, it makes the business a whole lot more fun, right? But the only time you have fun with something is if you know the rules and you know what you're doing. All right. So even what we like to do, okay, we like to venture off and kind of go off different types of uh, projects just because you never know somebody's going to ask you, hey, have you ever done something like this? All right. And that's the best thing that I learned from doing projects is not stuff that I like to do, but stuff that I don't like to do. Okay, there's, I'm telling you, the best thing you can learn is what projects do you not like to do? Okay, that way, when you set your conditions, if somebody comes looking for this specific job, okay, you instantly, right, you can instantly wave them off and say, hey, you know what? We do not specialize in this type of work. All right. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, this is a very good point here. All right, Pam, in the beginning, take notes. It takes time, but those notes will. All right. Yes. OK, you have to take notes. You have to take notes because sometimes you're moving so fast, right? You're in the middle of a project. You have a thousand things running in your mind. But if you jot stuff down, OK, when you go back and you analyze a project, all right, what we like to do anytime we have a project and it's completed all right maybe like a week later we go back and we crunch all those numbers all right we crunch numbers and we of course we have lessons learned hey next time when we do this we're gonna we're not gonna go with this way we're gonna do it this way all right and we make note and at the end of the year okay at the end of the year when you're kind of having a flashback of all the jobs you've done you have these notes in front of you and everything is a learning process all right so very good. Have uh, notes. OK. So I have a bunch, a bunch of books here just with notes all over the place. Right. And they are labeled. OK. Um, and then, uh, Alina, do you have some Excel where you could put numbers on? Uh, so I don't have an Excel sheet, but what I what I what I recommended was do have an Excel sheet. Just it, it doesn't have to be very complicated. Especially if if you're running a home base embroidery business, very basic numbers. Okay, so one side, right? First column is your monthly expense. On your second column is or the vendor, okay, of your monthly expense. And then the second box is how much does it cost? All right. So every month, do that over and over. And after a while, it should it should all look the same with either one or two expenses added or or taken away. OK, uh, maybe I uh, maybe I, I can have a Excel sheet as an as a example. All right. But I did do one here where it's kind of like um, a very basic type sheet. All right. And then T-Town shirts. Right. I've been using under 10,000 one price in between. All right. So one thing about this. OK. Uh, our shop, I like to keep our jobs in the below 10,000 stitches. OK. Anything, right? Because hats, right? Hats usually you're 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 below ten thousand polos. You're below ten thousand. I think that's why we make it very easy for us to calculate because we like to stay at that stage, right? Now, once you go above ten thousand to twenty thousand, thirty, forty, fifty, okay. Even if you're in the hundred thousand, now, okay, now it takes more time to calculate your stitches. Now you got to be a little bit more careful with quoting, right? Because uh, the stitches can be time consuming, all right? So what I would say is work your way up, okay? So now T-Town is saying from 10,000 to 20,000, that's a different price, right? That's a perfect, perfect example right there, okay? 10,000, you already know how long that takes, all right? That's the sweet spot that we like to be at. But now if you're going between 20 and and 10 and 20,000, now you know that time can double, right? That, that that amount of time under the needle, okay, um, can now double, even cleanup can double, okay? So definitely if you're going in between, okay, you're gonna have different ways to uh, to quote, okay? That's, that's a good way also, 
they have one price for a specific type of stitches but you got to be able to think quick right you got to be able to look at a, at a logo and say okay i know how much because customers they don't understand stitches if you tell them well how many stitches you have they're not going to know okay it's like you're talking a different language okay so if you are in that situation you kind of got to get used to running numbers of stitches all right all right and then um that's kind of like right alina um i have a feeling that counting per stitch is not right because you can choose there's so many long stitch or short all right so yeah so that that's good so that's what i'm saying whatever you specialize you kind of have an idea of how to count stitches okay how to count well my recommendation is if you're starting uh don't start with big projects start with smaller projects and then work your way up okay um and then Bevy Jean, recommendation, do you have a, can you do a class on visors? All right, yeah, yeah, I definitely can do that because I actually have some visors right here. I'll see if I knock that out this week. All right, thank you for the recommendation. All right. Um, all right, Jelaine, appreciate that. All right, much appreciate. All right. Uh, and what do you don't like to embroider? All right. So, yeah, I always mention, right, there's some stuff that I don't like to touch. All right. I do not like metallic thread. Okay. It was a nightmare. My Actually, my first project, right, my first embroidery project getting um, my first introduction to embroidery, 3D puff metallic hat. Okay. Worst combination you can ever get with. I eventually learned it, mastered it. But I told myself, you know what? I don't want to deal with metallic thread. All right. Um, other projects, I really don't like to get into uh, jacket backs. Okay. Uh, I like how they look. All right. Jacket backs, they look phenomenal. All right. But you got to price it, right? You got to price it very hefty. And you got to find those customers. Not anybody's willing to pay for those. Okay. There is a market out there for big jacket backs. Okay. There is a market out there. Uh, I just don't want to get into that world of having to charge 500 bucks for a jacket bag. All right. Uh, good question. Though. I like that question. There's actually like 30 other stuff that I don't like to do, but those are some of them. All right. Good morning, Jesse. All right. Nice to have you here. And then how do you organize your thread colors? All right. Um, Really, we just keep basic colors. I don't have too much unless a customer is looking for a specific color. Uh, we have them in um, in boxes, okay, totes, plastic totes, right? Just regular Costco type totes, and we have. Uh, let's see if I have them right here. Hold on, let me see if I have my totes right here. Uh, actually. Yeah, actually, nothing too fancy. We just keep them in Madeira. So these are all. We have a lot of threads that we just use, like just our everyday ones. But I like to keep them in dark, dark boxes or in a shaded place, right? We have our. We just keep them in boxes. I don't. I don't. I don't do anything specific. Uh, what What helps us out is that we keep a lot of just basic, uh, the basic threads. All right. Um. Uh, and then Jelaine, should you include that machine embroidery time as your time? Yeah, okay, so let me go back to, okay, so this is one thing that I wanted to touch on. All right, thank you for reminding me. All right, um, when you when you include your price per hour, all right, you want to, that's why it's, it's important to kind of have an average, right? Total time average from the time you started, not from the time you started to push start, not from the time you push start on your machine, but from the time you actually started that production on that job okay so even though your uh your stitches per minute gave you 12 and a half minutes that it takes you all right in reality hooping setting up the job and everything that's why i put half an hour so usually they say hey you know this hat with 1000 stitches is only going to take me five minutes to do right 
in reality, it didn't take you five minutes to do, right? It took you a whole lot of other steps to do in order to complete that project, right? So you always want to round up to the nearest 15 or even half hour per job, right? Especially if you're running less numbers, okay? If you're doing uh, single single items, okay? You definitely want to round up to the nearest half hour, and nearest hour. Now, once you get into the higher quantities, now you could refine and kind of uh, round up to the nearest five or 10 minutes, all right? But you definitely want to include, okay, all the time that you had to complete that project, even like boxing up, shipping and all that stuff, okay? Everything that you did from beginning to the very end of that project, all right? Um, all right, and then there's another good question about testing. I was just thinking, how many test sows do I have to do to my projects? I have, all right, so testing, uh, test, all right, that's another thing, right? That's another fee that customers don't really know that you're doing, right? Customers don't know that, some customers don't know that you actually did a test run to make sure their, their design is gonna look good, right? So usually, right, if everything is digitized correctly, it, it, you should only have one or two test sows, but there are times where you're trying to nail it perfect right and you're gonna do like five six seven eight nine ten sample stitch outs right especially if you got a big project right i've done a project where it was a very big project and we were running test stitches all night so we nailed it perfectly and then once you got it perfectly done you you let it run right uh that all has to do with your digitizing right uh, if you send it out how skillful your digitizer is, how good can you communicate with your digitizer, okay? And that also has to do with uh, how complicated of projects are you are you taking, right? If you're taking in complicated projects, you might have to do more stitch outs, more, more sample stitch outs, okay? That goes back to setting your conditions. There's certain projects where, or certain amount of colors where I'm gonna say, you know what, that's too many colors. I'm not gonna go ahead and, and try to work on that. Okay, that's another thing that under our conditions, there is a certain amount of colors, certain amount of complexity. Okay, even though the sky's the limit, right? A lot of times sky's the limit. Eventually, you got to draw the line and say, you know what? That's too much uh, detailed information for us to work on. All right. And then um, a lot of good information here. All right. All right, Lejean. All right. Thank you for stopping by. All right. Well, thanks, thanks. See you all next week. All right. Yeah. Be safe out there. All right. Uh, and then Juana. All right. I'm new and this class has been very fun. I mainly do direct sales. I'm still trying to find my niche. All right. All right. So, all right. That's where it comes down to, right? Your niche. All right. Your niche. If I think what makes embroidery hard and where people kind of stay uh, frustrated is when you're jumping from Garment to garment, niche to niche, okay? That's when embroidery is very complicated. All right. Um, as soon as you find your niche, all right, you know, you know when you found your niche is when you're having fun and you're like, hey, let's do this again. Hey, I want to continue doing this type of work, all right? So sometimes you got to continue doing projects until you kind of find your home. Okay, that's what it is. And that's all you're doing right now when you're doing samples, working on stuff is you're just finding your home. And once you find your home, okay, you're gonna learn everything there is about that field right there. All right. All right. Um, all right, so very good class today. All right, very good class, very good learning stuff. All right, this this type of information never stops because just when you've done calculated all your all your uh, expenses and everything, right? Next month you might have new expenses. All right, or or vendors might change information or change prices on you. Okay, so this information is never ending. All right, so I do want to thank everybody for joining us today. Okay, I think it was a very good informative class, and this is something we're definitely going to build upon and add more, right? Especially with the questions that I got, okay? Uh, dealing with Excel sheets uh, and certain charts, okay? We're gonna create charts and create more information on top of this, all right? So I do wanna thank everybody for stopping by. If you're on the replay and you have any questions, leave them down below.
because there will definitely be a part two on this topic here. All right. So I'll see everybody next week. Same time, same day, every Saturday morning. All right. See you to the next one. All right. Peace out.